just um, leave it be like that. But I always like to put fillets on things like these to make sure that they, um, especially something that's going to be held in the hand, um, you don't want to have sharp corners on it. So if I go to fillet, let's go to a full round fillet, and I want to select the left face, middle box, top face, bottom box, and the right face. And that pulls a full round fillet for me. Call up another fillet command, and I'll do a regular fillet this time, just say a millimeter. And I'll just take the top and the bottom. And I might as well just get this transition looking good here as well. Okay, I'll just change that to 0.5. That does look a bit severe. Okay. So what I want to do now, as you can see in the image on my desktop, <coughs> is to put a rubber grip around that. The geometry involved here isn't that difficult, so it wouldn't be that difficult to actually draw it, but this method works no matter how complicated the model is. So I'll start off by putting in a reference geometry, a plane, and I'll select, in my case, the right plane, and I want the plane to land somewhere around there. Wherever that plane is, that's where the rubber grip will stop. What I will do is go Insert Features Split, and I will use that plane and go cut part and simply select the part to the left and the part to the right for the cut. Make sure you deselect consume cut bodies and press OK. I'll hide that plane because I'm finished with it. And over here I see solid bodies 2. If I click this first one and rename that handle. This other piece we'll call that head. So I've got two bodies. I can right click and hide either one of those as I see fit. In fact, I will hide the head for a moment. What I want to do now is go insert features move copy. And the bodies to move is actually this body. And if I go down and select translate rotate, I should be able to tick this box copy. And what I could potentially do is now drag this and leave a copy of itself beside itself. But if I leave the translation at 000 and press OK, it'll give me a little notification, say OK. What it's done is it's placed a copy of itself over itself. So this move body copy, I'm actually going to rename that to rubber grip. So, and I'll hide the handle. Handle and rubber grip are the same shape and occupy the same space. What I'll now do is shell this rubber handle to a thickness of, let's just say, 0.5 of a mil. We'll see how that looks. We'll turn on Show Preview and remove this face. Now, I don't want that to happen. What I want to happen is this. I want to take the shell outward button, which means it maintains the hollow inside the exact same shape as the handle, but removes that and puts the rubber grip around it. So there it is. If I now turn back on the handle, you can see the handle is inside it. If I turn back on the head, you can see that as well. So to visualize this a little more clearly, I will get, uh, let's say, high gloss plastic for the moment and put it onto, not the part, but the, the body of the handle. I'll hide the rubber grip for a moment and I will put some metal, let's just say steel for a moment, regular steel onto this body and some regular steel onto this body. It's not ideal because those two parts, or bodies in reality, would not be split like that. So I can simply go Insert Features Combine, and I will add this part and that part together. Now that that's set again. So I actually will have to put the metal back on again. There we go. So now if I simply turn on the rubber grip over here, I now have the rubber grip which wraps perfectly around the handle. And the good thing is if the handle changes shape or size, so too will the rubber grip. And I know that's a pretty simple shape, but um, at least it will um, it, it'll work, no matter how complicated the shape. One last thing to do before I uh, finish up <coughs> is to bring in a decal. Now, I want to bring in an image, so if I go to, ins or sorry, if I go to Render Tools, uh, Edit Decal, and Browse to find the image, which I've placed on my desktop, uh, this is the preview. I can simply then click this flat surface and it brings in the image like that. And it doesn't look the part because it's got this white background. I don't want the white background, I just want the black image. And even when you render that, it'll take a moment, but if I open up the preview window, the white sticker will still appear and just won't look right. So this is what we'll do. 
I click this, press the drop down arrow beside appearances and press the X beside the decal to remove it. I will use PowerPoint to edit this decal. So open up PowerPoint and go insert pictures, browse to my desktop, bring in the road sign. It's very hard to see that it has a white background against the white background of the PowerPoint slide. So I will just change the background to say gray for a moment. And if I double click this image and select color, set transparent color. Now if I click anywhere in the white of this image, the white becomes removed. So now the image has a clear background. So I've edited the image in PowerPoint. So while I'm at it, I'm also going to go to insert text box and I can write in text and Titan only. And you can obviously change the font or the shape or the size of that as you see fit. I'll just make it a little bigger. Now this image, I need to right click and go save as picture <clears throat> and you must save it as a PNG file. If you save it as a JPEG, it will not remember the clear background. So press save. And while I'm at it, the text box, I can right click the text box, save as picture, make sure it's a PNG file and save that as well. We're now finished with the PowerPoint. Now with my newly edited images, I can go to edit decal, browse, go to my desktop, which is where I save them. And I can bring in picture one, Click there. Now it comes in with a black background, but that's not a problem. To, to, that, when you render that, the black background will be gone. But if you want to remove that black background, just simply select Use Decal Image Alpha Channel and it goes away. And press OK. While I'm at it, I can go to Edit Decal again, Browse, and select the Desktop, Picture 2, click the surface, and now the text comes in. To resize any of these images, you click the corner drag handles. To move them, you click anywhere within the frame. To rotate them, you use this blue circle. I'm trying to get the black seal. There it is. So once you're happy with that, that's the decal done. And when you render that, it should look pretty good.